we can talk about that too. <laughs> There's a whole thing. God damn it. You're going to get me canceled from the social media accounts I don't have. Hello and welcome to Deus Ex Comedian. My name is Ryan Bussell. I'll be your host. I am an American living in Sweden since 2006 and a comic since 2011. On this podcast, I'll be talking to comics who have retired, uh, or they're taking a long break, or they simply quit the grind, and they're happy to perform just a handful of times per year. So what made them slow down or even stop performing altogether? Is there anything about the grind that they miss? Most importantly, without approval from drunk strangers, how instead do they fill that dark hole inside where a soul should be? Let's find out. My guest this week is a former co-owner of the legendary Power Comedy Club and also a runner-up in the Funniest Person in Mid-Sweden contest, Eric Boyerson. Hi. Uh, that's a dick move. <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly why you want that contest. Uh, I do definitely want to talk to you about that uh, mm -hmm. later on. But before we start, though, I, there's yeah. a story I'm dying to tell you. So uh, I live on the ground floor of this building, my apartment building, uh, as you know, and my neighbors are pretty, it's a pretty small building, and my neighbors are all pretty old. It's pretty quiet here, which is nice. The walls are thick. You can't really hear anything. Yeah. Uh, but last night, 1 o'clock in the morning, I uh, went to go to bed, was brushing my teeth in the bathroom, and sound travels to the pipes pretty well. So I could hear what sounded like an argument. Like, it sounded like I could hear two people fighting. You know, it's like really low. Yeah, you can yeah, yeah. Tell. yeah. It's like 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that was definitely, something's going on, but I figured, okay, whatever. Go yeah. work this stuff out. Went to bed passed out 4 30 in the morning the police show up they smash the glass on the front door to get in right. charge up the stairs come down dragging uh an old very drunk and very naked 68 year old <laughs> man down the stairs and i know he's 68 because he was screaming on the way down wake up neighbors <laughs> look at the scary 68 year old man the police had to come for so they want they want to drag him like to the car outside, but they couldn't do that because there's glass everywhere and barefoot. He's nude. Yeah, you know, nude barefoot. So they have to wait outside my door while they swoop up all the glass and he's just like screaming the entire time. And they finally drag him to the car. And I the only reason I know any of this is because my wife told me this morning when I woke up I slept <laughs> through it completely, did not hear a thing. So that was a fun thing to wake up to. Well. It would have been more fun to wake up during, I would assume, this hero's journey. <laughs> <laughs> the cops just infringing on his freedom to beat his wife. It's bullshit. If that's what happened. Allegedly. <laughs> Alleg <laughs> Thanks for coming out to... Uh, uh, to thank you for side. having me. Uh, thank you for having me. And there was no glass outside your door. No, they've cleaned up since. But if I didn't hear the story, I would have woken up this morning to find, okay, the front door is all smashed and the glass everywhere. They cleaned up like during the morning i would have, i would have had no idea at all about any of it would you be interested enough to ask around or would you just eh. no this is sweden i wouldn't talk to my neighbors yeah, yeah makes sense yeah. i like that <laughs> <laughs> well they actually tried to break in to our apartment building and i would have loved to have seen that because the only thing they managed to damage was the paint on the door like nothing was bent nothing was working weird just the paint and they had it was a large chunk of the door that was all peeled but it, just nothing and you have a new building right yeah. New, yeah yeah so it's like a security front door <laughs> very nice yeah so uh would you are you now considered a or would you say you are an ex comedian are you done done well it's like they say a uh, comic is a state of being no, I'm just uh <clears throat> i don't know yes yes i would say well i don't know if i've like formally quit uh cuz the decision was kind of made for me uh we can talk about that later but Let's flip it around. I would absolutely not call myself a comic. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I would call myself an ex-comic. Uh, do you get the distinction? I do, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Uh, but probably 
Okay. Not a comic, but not an ex-comic. But compared to how you were, though, you were certainly... Oh, hell yeah. 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 <laughs> You've left the grind. Yes. Yes, I have. Uh, but I mean, I had, uh, I had one foot out the door already uh, a year back when, when the, big, the big C hit. Uh, so I had one foot out the door, uh, and then COVID hit, and there were no gigs, really. And now I'm having a kid, and I'm locked at home. So it's been very easy to just stop. Right. So that's probably what I've done. And do you miss it? E <laughs> eh. I miss parts of it. Like... <sighs> What I really miss is thinking about something that I think is funny. Like, I, there is something funny in here. And then walking on stage and having it work. I miss that little journey. Right. Uh, so I miss performing, kind of. I don't miss being nervous about performing. I don't miss waiting to perform. I don't miss sitting around after I've performed. But the just those five, 10, 15 minutes, I kind of miss those if they went well. I don't miss bombing. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's, it's a thorny question, I would say. I don't know like parts of it. Part of me is just hugely relieved that I don't have to think about it anymore. Okay. Uh, I can play a lot more video games now. And I guess so you don't think about them, or did you think of do you think of new jokes now? Or? Well, that's also I don't know if you can relate, but I don't know if I could have done stand up in the last year due to COVID, because I I have no there's no information going into my brain. I don't like my writing process was very much talk to people. And then something took root and it took a couple of days and that turned into a joke later. I don't talk to people anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what I would say. Like, and I refuse to go up and do the same jokes I did a year and a half ago. Just because that's that's what I got. Like, I'm not going to do that. Well, I can, I can definitely relate to that. I mean, I spent most of the last year either on my couch or at the gym. Yeah. I'm not really interacting with anyone either. Yeah, that's that's just loads of material just waiting to happen <laughs> on that couch. Like, no. Uh, so. But, yeah. you, but you say that you wouldn't, that you could not keep doing the same material over and over. But that's not a problem for many comics who no, have stayed active not. during this time. It is not. Uh, I'll have to start my own podcast and talk to them how they do it because I I don't get it. Like if obviously I had, you see, I had technically still have the jokes, but <laughs> <laughs> I had I had a bunch of jokes that were like staples that I used for for gigs that were important or whatever. But I didn't recycle material very often. I like to think, at least. Like I had an opener. I had the hooker bit stayed st stuck around for a long while. <laughs> uh, but most of the time, I did come up with new things. And that was what was fun to me. Like, If a joke was okay and would have taken a lot of work to get really good, I threw it away and I started something new because that was more fun. So you're absolutely prioritize you prioritize yourself then. You're not thinking of the audience then. Like if you, you know, in other words, like you, you know you you know you have jokes that work, yeah. then right. you're gonna do it. You're gonna do a, a, a gig. If you're thinking of the audience, then you should be sticking with the stuff you know works. Uh, depends on the gig, and also I like to think like this is a question for others to really answer. But I like to think that I was better with worse material if I liked that material. Uh, I had a tendency to fall into the let's say the thing again exactly the same way we've done a hundred times already and it sounds robotic and that's not fun 
but if it's more in the moment, let's make this awful joke work, <laughs> I was better, which made it a better show for the audience as well. I think. Yeah, I think the I think the audience is smart enough. You can kind of tell when someone says yeah. a joke they don't really believe in anymore. Yeah, exactly. You, you lose for sure, that way for sure. Yeah. So it's a, it's a yes and no because uh, I think you're a bit the same. Like even if you're happy with your own execution, if the audience didn't have a good time, it wasn't a good gig. Right. <laughs> so, I mean. Yeah, but caring about the audience, absolutely. But they're the measuring stick more than they are the recipient of my stand-up. That sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all baked in into a huge thorny ball of like why why do we do this? Like, there, it's not just one reason. It's not. It's fun to do comedy. It's. A whole host of things, and yeah, I think I need to pay you to unpack that because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then it's a therapy session. Well, I know in the beginning, like when I first when I first started, uh, and, and initially I was really thinking about like I'm gonna make the audience laugh. Yeah. And then after a few months, my first few months, uh, I, I I managed to do that. Yeah. And then 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 it just became all about myself, and then I just I just want to do what I want to do, and it didn't matter if they liked me or not, and I said. I believe it at the time. I don't care what they think. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm not here for them. They're here for me. Uh, and then, then I bombed badly, the, like really <laughs> badly, the first time. I thought, hey, you know what? Actually, I do care. I care a lot. Care. <laughs> so it's on there. Yeah. Uh, so we, but the weird thing is, like, the audience is really it's a thing. It's not people anymore. It's a thing. It's a measuring tool. And it's something that you try to play and have them react the way you want want to react. Uh, like sometimes I had jokes where they laughed at the wrong place and that bothered me for weeks. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. I don't get it. Why was this bit funny? This was the setup. Like this wasn't supposed to be the good bit, but they, that worked way better. And then try and figure that out. So it's a very, it's a very intro, introspective art form. I'm, I'm, I think I know how, you're, how you'll answer this question, but uh, a, a lot of comics talk about uh, when they get that la they get that first laugh, and they start off in comedy, and they get, they get that laugh, and that's like heroin. It's like they have to keep chasing that that laugh. That, 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 that laugh is so important that they have to keep going for it. Did you feel? Have you felt the same way? Well, I didn't really get laughs uh, in the beginning. Yeah, I did. <laughs> well, uh, no, I absolutely. I can. I can absolutely relate to that. But it wasn't why I kept going. I, I wasn't chasing the dragon that way. Uh, for me, it was a lot of, I want to be able to predict how this is going to land. Like I want to, I want to construct this, this little, this little joke. And nine times out of 10, the audience is going to react in the way I have predicted they will react. That was the fun part for me, like mm. constructing this journey the, the roller coaster whatever <laughs> that's a huge pet peeve of mine i hate when people use the word journey to yeah. describe anything that's not actually a journey eh, yeah that's why, that's why I, can't, I can't watch like idol or <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a second language yeah. i'm sorry <laughs> that's fine it's okay it's my own pet, my own pet peeve but, but i do understand completely what you, what you mean like mm. for me it was never about chasing the laugh it was always about Thinking of a set and just imagining like, okay, like if they're gonna laugh here, they're gonna listen here, uh, they're gonna like groan here, yeah. they're gonna applaud there, yeah. and then I go do the set and they do exactly, it goes exactly yeah. as I planned, and that's when I felt the best. Like, okay, yeah. now I got exactly yeah, I nailed it. Yeah. Uh, but I also I like to improvise more than you do, I think, uh, and that was another like fun thing when you hit that zone where like you're riffing. And it's working and sometimes rarely you hit a point where you can do no wrong and that feeling is that's heroin that's that's a good feeling yeah I can imagine I, I, yeah it's true I don't I've never really done improv yeah. or riff I have like absolutely changed sets like if I had 
go into a set thinking, okay, I'm going to do this material and then realize, okay, this is not going to work or I should try to do something else and I'll switch on the fly. Yeah. But still, they are very much like songs. Yeah. Like, that, I mean, that, it's I like, it's, it it's like Lego. Uh, yeah, you that's good. Yeah. Stick it together in various configurations. And I think everyone does that who has done it at least for more than a year. Uh, and have, you, have would, some you would material. hope so. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I was actually thinking about to the point you made earlier, because uh, this this podcast will be very much focused on people who've actually left yeah. and don't don't grind anymore. But I think mm. now and then maybe I'll have like an anti ex comic and actually get someone in who is like just has not stopped performing ever, yeah. and just the just contrast. to see like yeah, because yeah. like, I know you and I are both very snobbish about, about comedy, and I, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I take offense, but like personally, but I really grapple with that. Like yes. it's like it's like um. Like it's like pop country. Like I my 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 music taste is really broad. I like, yeah. like a lot of different things. But, but pop country, I really cannot stand pop country at all. And my mother and my sister fell in love with that years ago. And I used just to give them a ton of shit for liking that music. Yeah. And back was like, it's so it's pop country. It's so popular. It's a lot of people like it, and let them like it. Yeah, uh, that's actually one of the reasons I started thinking about quitting because I didn't like who I became a bit. Like, stand-up has been very positive. Like, it's a net positive for me as a human. Uh, I was a shy, awkward weirdo before I started. Uh, I'm still yeah, bad, but I can yes. hide it uh, better. I was, like, wondering, I was wondering whether it Yeah, no, but I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I can socially pretend better than I could before... Uh, I can, like, just writing emails. I'm better at doing that, like, making things more interesting and getting to the point, cutting fat from a conversation. Hmm. I, I credit that to comedy. So a huge amount of positive things have come out of me doing comedy. But there, I was a worse person by the end than I probably was in the beginning because I was I was snobbish I still am snobbish but I doesn't come out as much <laughs> because I'm not exposed to those situations as much uh, jealous like lots of jealousy hmm. people I perceive to be worse than me having better opportunities or doing better like just a set like being jealous about that as like and cutting that out has also been a pretty good feeling that's I would good say. yeah I, I talked about that before about that the, the jealousy phase yeah. and I, I think i think all comics go through or most comics go through yeah. similar phases but you get to a point when yeah like you said like, like in the beginning you're just like oh my god i can't believe i'm doing this yeah and then after a while it's like fuck that guy i'm, I'm funnier than them like yeah. why are they going yeah. to and it feels like you can choose one or one or two paths to either stay in that bitter, angry, jealous <sighs> mode, or you kind of like just like oh, whatever. It's, it's yeah, it's fine. Uh, you might have chose a third road, just get off the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I I struggled with that a lot. I like to think that like there's a bunch of comments that I find really funny and that I enjoy, and I never felt bad about them doing better than me or getting opportunities that i didn't get or anything but it's these these specific ones that i thought were shit and they just are gonna get me canceled from the social media accounts i don't have that is another positive with quitting i have managed to just wean off all social media and i am doing much better now than i was was before yeah that's the thing now at the at the start of 2020 yeah also before covid i also took a step back and yeah. thought, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take a break for a little while uh and i really just like, went off like the kind of glance at social media now mm -hmm. maybe before like even a couple of years ago i'd go on facebook and just scroll 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 like yeah. i wasn't like even reading anything i just, no. I just but i saw the c like it was like white like that's how white noise looks yeah i'm just like Ooh. okay it's like Ooh. and at the start of last year, it was just like, okay, I'll pop on. Is there anything happening? Not really. I'll like scroll like a half a page. And I was like, ah, okay. And yeah. Off. And 
I've stayed in that mode. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I, I go, I pop on now, and then I'll, I'll, I'll make it some random post, or I'll make a joke or something. And that's really... It's, yeah. It is nice. It's like, it's like poison for a brain. Like, I rarely had positive feelings, like, after logging off my social media accounts. I was always, like, either I found a news article that pissed me off, or someone <laughs> who was shit at stand-up had a huge opportunity and I was pissed, or someone made a very unfunny joke and my snob, my inner <laughs> snob was offended, like, it was never positive. So, I stepped away from that, and that feels great. And I couldn't do that if I was still doing comedy, because you are ex expected to, like, self-promote and... Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I was actually talking to a mutual friend. Uh, yeah. And then and she's like, she's not a comic, or she is, but she's also does a lot of things. Anyway, uh, she has to be active on social media. Yeah. Uh, but she's going through exactly the same thing, just not in comedy, but like, she sees opportunities that other people get, and yeah. it's just wearing her down. I like remind her, like, everyone just posts, like, the best version of their life, yeah. also. And not, not like people really, unless, unless it's like a feeling sad, like, oh, like, like it's give, give me attention yeah. in the post. It's, it's still this, like, I'm doing so amazing. Mm. So yeah, it, it of course gets you down, and it is it is nice to just let just ignore it. Just yeah, like a... just step away. Uh, yeah. So how long were you? How long were you active? I done... think like five years or so. Okay. And how did you start? Or why did you even want to start? Like, what, what drew you to comedy in the first place? Uh, well, I had decided uh, when I was a teenager that I was a comedic genius. Uh, <laughs> And it was time to show the world uh, what a comedic genius I was. Uh, and then I started performing and realized that I am not a genius, in fact. And I got hooked. Like, things didn't work as I thought they would. Uh, and that interested me. So I kept going. And your first gig ever was at a club that I, that I was running. Yes. So, uh, so a mutual friend of the comic actually contacted me and said, uh, oh, I know this guy, like he, uh, worked with him and he'd like to, uh, like do a gig at your, at your club. Yeah. And I said, sure. And he performed and I have zero memory of any of that. I just, yeah. I just, I just know the story, but <laughs> I don't have any memory of that whatsoever. And I'm actually contacting me if I'm going to be in my club or the I'm first time. actually really happy you don't remember it. That means it wasn't <laughs> that bad. <laughs> It's really personal. I don't I just no, yeah, I just no. But I was I was a white dude in his mid twenties doing stand up comedy. Like what? There was nothing interesting about what I was doing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it makes sense that you don't remember that. I do. I remember that That's first right. gig. But the the thing thing is though, the reason you really came on my radar was because the fact that I would see you. So yeah. I, I'd go to a club and I was I was booked. And I'd see you and, and the fellow rookie, yeah. Sir Patrick. Yeah. And you would be at the club trying to get stage time yep. and usually not getting it. Nope. And you would stay for the show anyway, actually watch, and you would be back the week after. And I loved that because I was like, see, that's yeah. that's what's that would like remind me of that's how oh that's how it was back in the day. Like that that's how yeah. Thomas got stage time and actually the grind of like harassing club owners and actually so I, I really I appreciate that you were out there. Yeah, and uh, I had a lot of fun in that year or so I did that it was it was a ton of fun couldn't do it again now uh, responsibilities and the ability to get hangovers which I didn't have back then <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah it was a ton of fun and I'm happy I did it and then one day you messaged me out of the blue and invited me for a beer yeah I needed comic friends which is still to this, I've been here, I've been in this country for 15 years, and you're the first and only person that ever actually asked me for a beer. Yeah, so that was nice. I'm, an, I'm an awkward weirdo. <laughs> Hi, want to be friends, Ryan? <laughs> no, I give Swedes a hard time, but I, 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 I can't judge. I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever written someone I barely know and said, hey, you want to hang out? Yeah, but I'm, I, also, I'm not from Stockholm. Uh, so I had like two or three friends here, and you can't drink weekly with only two or three <laughs> friends uh so i need to branch out uh, i've tried with a lot of people you are not my first runner i'm very sorry that's okay 
<laughs> you I, were I like a man with experience. experience so one, okay. one of the more long-lasting ones. But, uh, but yeah, I've done that a bunch of times. And for you listeners, viewers, uh, if you need a friend, ask people. <laughs> we appreciate that. We do. I want to talk to you about the contest. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, because there's, there's, there's actually two things that bother me about that that night All right. to this day. Uh, so for the listeners, a little backstory. Uh, so Eric and I went on a road trip to this club out in the Midwest of, uh, of Sweden uh, to take part in a comedy contest. Uh, it was a semifinal. There's going to be one winner each night, and then there'll, eventually there'll be a final to decide the funniest person in, in mid-Sweden. And uh, I don't think you care about the competition. I certainly didn't. I right. don't like comedy contests. Uh, but if there is a contest, I want to win that contest. Okay. I mean, I really didn't, I didn't really care. Yeah. Uh, I didn't. I didn't want to lose, of course. Yeah. But for me, it was I just wanted to go perform. To, to yes, myself. that was the primary. Like, I'm not mad about not winning that contest. But if it is a contest, obviously, I want to win. And that's the first thing that yeah. I feel bad about is uh, I did win that night. Yes, you did. And also. That was for you. That was one of one of, if not the best set I've seen you do. Like you were really, really good. I had a really good set. Yes, and I also did have a good set, but I don't know for sure that I had a better set. Well, that is one of the reasons I don't like comedy contests. Like there are so many variables, uh, and the the two comics. I, I was third on the lineup. I think. Uh, I was pretty early, but you were last, I think. Really? That was the other way around. No, I was I was oh, first. Yeah. Uh, so the two two comics that went before me, they had a rough time. Uh, they had a really rough time. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so I didn't have a warm room when I when I walked on, uh, but I turned it. I had a really good set, and you had a warm room, and that's sometimes all. It takes, and also you were, you were last, so you were fresh in their memory. Like, I'm, and and I'm also, a, and also speaking English, I'm the only English speaker. I believe yeah. I was the only English yes. speaker going tonight, so it stands out that way, too. So, so I feel I feel kind of bad. No, you because shouldn't. Of, you shouldn't. You had a I, really I know, good but, set. But I know how it sounds too. Like, well, if I wasn't there, you would have won. Uh, yeah, I would have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one thing. The other thing is. Uh, so there were four of us. So, so the audience voted uh, for who was the best tonight. So at the end of the show, while we waited for the audience to put their votes in, uh, four of us that were in the contest sat at a table waiting for the results. And three of the four of us had a very long and loud conversation that went sort of along the lines of, hey, man, you had a great set. I think you're going to win. No, man, you had a great set. I think you're going to win. Yep. No, man, I think you had a great set. I think you're yeah. going to win. Yeah. While the fourth person was not part of the conversation, still at the table, and was not saying anything to us, and we weren't saying anything to him. And nope. Yeah, that, so it, it bugged me then. Uh, I think I, re I think I realized it was going on a little too late. Uh, it bugged me then. It still bugged me now. So it's kind of true. Yeah, uh, but he's he's a quiet dude off stage as well. So, and he was sitting, like, not at our table. He was at the table next to us with sure. with some people uh so he wasn't really in the same conversation like he had a side conversation and this is another pet peeve of mine i don't think like this may be a lie but i don't think it is i never told anyone they had a good set when they didn't and yeah i also had, try yeah and he's not he did not have a good set. He was one of the two before me. That was a cold fucking room. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I've, I've always really tried to avoid that. Uh, yeah. Telling people they had a good set when they, they didn't. And there, yeah. there's been many times when I just saw a comic come off stage with just that, all that yeah. energy and they're, they're, looking for, they're looking for the approval. Like, uh, I was really good, wasn't I? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a pet peeve. I can, see, of mine. I can see why you thought so. Yeah. Uh, Pet peeve of mine, uh, and I think necessary if you do stand up that you you're aware, self aware enough to know when you ate shit. Uh, yeah, you hope so. I, I know I, I get like a, like on this day memories on Facebook. Yeah, and I'll be a post from like 
10 years ago when I first, when I first started. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh, man, I, I killed tonight. It's like, no, I'm sure I didn't. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, it's like, no one yawned during my set. Yeah. Yeah, a bit like that. Man. <sighs> At the same time, like, now that we're talking about comedy, it, it, yeah, it tickles my insights yeah. a bit. Uh, but like I was, I was at the stage, I think, where I I rarely bombed anymore. Uh, even more rare that I killed, but I was pretty consistent and I was pretty pretty all right. But I hadn't developed really. I feel like for some time, even though I performed quite a lot, we were running our club and stuff like that. So I hit, I hit, I felt like I hit a wall and that was also hard to deal with. Like, is this it? Is this as good as I'm going to get? And I tapped out. Hmm. So, yeah. And you absolutely would not host. So for anyone who doesn't know, so yeah. as Eric and I and one of the comic uh, ran a club together for, yeah. for a couple of years, as mostly a positive experience. Hmm. But do you, do you feel like ton of fun? But do you feel like did it wear? If you, if you, well, what I want to ask is if you if you weren't running club for the for the last few years, yes. Do you think that would have affected you one way or the other? I don't know. I have thought about it. I don't know. I think at that stage where I was, I needed that home court, like this place where I could always perform. Uh, but at the same time, it. I didn't have this every gig matters uh so let's try let's try our hardest and do our best i didn't have that anymore hmm. so i got a little lazy and which is probably why i hit that wall so i i don't know it's hard to a b test this as well like i can't <laughs> jump to the alternate timeline well i, I can imagine one thing it must have had it must have had an effect on you because uh, you were print always the DJ yes uh, at the club uh, which meant you were stuck at the DJ booth oh yeah and had no escape really for the entire show so you were usually the ones the comics were looking at while they were on stage and you know we had a lot of some of my favorite people came through that club yeah uh, a lot of people were not that very good though either uh, the, the more they ate shit the more intense the eye contact they had with me <laughs> i had to watch them die inside <laughs> just eye contact uh yeah i was it was rough <laughs> but uh, and it increased my snobbishness because sometimes like we had the marathon like 400 comics one after the other uh by the end most of them white dudes late 20s same same jokes like not a lot changed in between uh and the room would be deader and deader and then someone walked on and turned it around hmm. and that increased my snobbishness i was like that's a comic you eh eh <laughs> you you play that's that's fine we'll start somewhere. yeah uh, but i didn't like that it did that to me uh, and that probably wouldn't have happened if i didn't run a club I get that for sure. Yeah. I mean, don't we all try and fight the douchebag inside? <laughs> <laughs> Is that not life? I don't know. That's, again, one of the motivations for me to do this podcast in the first place is because I, 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 mean, I fell in love with comedy when I was 11 years old. Yeah. I started 10 years ago, and today I don't feel any less passionate about stamp than I ever did. I do. You do? Yeah. I still, I still think I feel the same way, but this is the longest break I've ever, I've ever yeah. had and I don't miss it that much no and it's for me it's a bit like uh, like knowing knowing a magic trick like it goes away uh, the, the the amazement and wonder uh, like if I watch a stand up special on Netflix and it's it's good but it's not amazing I know how that sausage gets made Okay. Uh, it's a bit eh. <laughs> like eh, I could have probably have done that if I stuck at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but well, I'm very fascinated because I knew when I when I decided to take a step back. Yeah, 
uh, I didn't perform for, for months. But I knew, like, even during COVID, there were clubs that stayed open. Yeah. And I knew there were certain comics who were there at least one night a week. Just consistently. And I knew, even from the very beginning, I knew that, okay, when I go back to that club after being away for several months, and I see these people I've seen before, they're not going to have one new word. Like, they're not going to have one new joke I haven't heard before. And that's exactly what happened when I finally did go back to the clubs, and they're just doing... It's, it's, the thing is, it's not just that it's the same jokes. It's, it's the, the same, same cadence. It's, 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 it's exactly, exactly the same. The same it's way. the same gestures. It's everything. You may think that's really supposed to be spontaneous, and it's just like, <sighs> obviously written down. It just everything's it, exactly the same. And I, and I don't want to judge them for it because they, they clearly love doing it. But I don't know. I get, that's, I get, I get, that, I get that conflict. That I, sh- I should have just let them do it. And at the same time, I just wonder why. why? My, my inner snob goes wild uh, at that. And I, I, I get, like, genuinely upset. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? You have five minutes once a week, and this is it. Uh, and I get mad. But I have a rage problem, so. But at the same time, they could be going through exactly what we're doing, which is, yeah. like, there's just nothing really happening. Yeah. There's nothing happening. Life is just yeah, but still. Like, I mean, I, I get it. No to, be, to be clear, the problem here is me, not them. Like, they should do what they're doing. Uh... But, yeah, I think maybe I shouldn't be in stand-up because I'm a dick. (laughs) So, yeah. Uh, But it's a weird world. You meet a lot of weird people. Most of them are too weird. (laughs) (laughs) I think we're all misfits. Yes. Yes, I mean, I mean... We're going on stage looking for approval from drunk strangers. So yes. I, so it's there clearly something's wrong with, with all of us. Uh, now that you're not performing, do you miss uh, hanging out after a gig? Uh, not especially. Yeah. But, but that's more. I think for me, that's more of the. I, I miss locations to hang out. Like there are yeah. there are certain clubs that were just a lot of fun. To hang out at, and that doesn't, and they like ceased operation a long time ago. Mm. And I, I don't want to look back at the past and I think, oh, things were so much better before. But in some cases, there were things that were yeah, better before. Was better before. <laughs> so I'm like, there, there's certainly people. There's certainly specific people I miss. Yeah, uh, hanging out with. But just like in general, do I miss hanging out at a club? I would say no. I, yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. Uh, it's the same for me. I thought I would miss it a lot more than I do. I miss I miss specific people, just as you. Uh, that without the the social glue of stand up, that I I don't talk to them. But just the general hanging out, no, don't miss it at all. Actually, there's a weird like one upping always going on when com- comics hang out. It's like, I don't need to listen to your bit, which is clearly a bit yeah. you're doing, <laughs> but disguises conversation. I don't miss that, having that happen. Yeah, I get that for sure. Yeah. The word, the sad thing for me about uh, about Power, so, the, the, so our club, yeah, uh, was that actually, especially when it was at uh, the first location, so we were in two different locations. I, I do find looking back, I, kinda, I really miss the first room much more than the second room. Same. It was a better room. Uh, yeah, we had better okay. nights at the new place, uh, more people, and but the room was a lot better at the first place. Yeah, I just uh, yeah, it really felt like home. Yeah, so, so I, m- I missed that room, and I, I was really happy that it became like a really cool place to hang out for other comics. Like they yeah. really enjoyed hanging out before the show, hanging out there during the show, wherever they were in the room or outside the room, but they just they just enjoyed hanging. So I was really like that, but I rarely part and the hang yeah and for me it all it's screwed a bit with like my my social anxiety i don't really have social anxiety but sometimes some some aspect of it pops up and not knowing if people were genuinely if they genuinely wanted to talk to me or if they did because i was one of the club runners hmm. at a club where everyone gets to perform so why would they but 
that fucked with my head a lot. Like, I don't know if they, these people actually like me. And I, I couldn't really take that. So I went home <laughs> <laughs> most of the time. I had that happen. I was the, uh, it was a road gig. Yeah. Uh, so by train. So I was at this club and there were two rookies uh, who live in Uppsala, which is like one train yeah. station north of where I live now. Uh, and we just gone towards the south. So after, after the show was over and we were talking there, they went, they went to pick my, pick my brain. They knew who I was. Uh, they knew that I had the club. Uh, so we're talking about comedy and they're b both brand new, brand new. Yeah. Love himself. So on the train home, same train, talking. And I, I made, I forget, I don't know what joke it was. I, I made just some, some joke. And the two of them laughed way too hard. Like I realized, like I could see, oh, like yeah. as they're laughing, like, oh, no. Uh, yes, you're not thoroughly. Oh, I would go home and cut myself. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I was I, I was never a player in the Stockholm stand-up scene, but I had like similar things happen, and it just felt I felt dirty after they happened. I, I didn't like it. No. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you meet you meet some some genuinely amazing people as well, interesting people. But most are like me and I'm not that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very socially awkward, obviously awkward yeah. myself. Well, I'm curious though, you said uh, you feel like the jealousy of comics you yeah. think are not as good as you, but they get yes. better opportunities than you. Have you had much ambition in stamp? Like, would you, in other words, like, there have been opportunities that you didn't, were you seeking those opportunities? <sighs> So this is now we're in the territory of my own neuroses. Uh, obviously, I had ambitions. Yes, I, I wanted to make a living. I wanted to be a household name. I wanted to go on tour all over. Hmm. Yes, obviously, I wanted to. Did I do anything to make that happen? God, no. Because if you try and you fail, then you fail. But if you don't try, it, the world is unjust. Okay. So yeah, I had that happen a lot. Like we talked about self-promoting. Uh, I didn't fucking self-promote. No. <laughs> uh, so obviously I didn't make it because I didn't work too hard and I wouldn't play the game. Uh, and I mean, us running the club and we had the whole the touring concept that we were spitballing and we did a few few shows like on the road I figured that could be a way to bypass playing the game a little but I didn't really I didn't apply myself hmm. uh, but yeah obviously I wanted to be the guy I wanted to be Bill Burr Dave Chappelle Eric Bermondorson well you say you say that obviously but like I never had I've never had much ambition yeah okay Really, like, it, of course, it would be, be nice. I'd, I'd, I'd love for that to happen. Yeah, and but it the, was never, it, it was never goal. I never, I never went into stamp with a goal in mind. Like no, I, I, like I didn't like. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do these. I'm going to grind through the open mics for a while. Yeah, and then I'm going to get on the radio, and I'm going to get a sitcom. Like, uh, like, like no, that. that was never the plan. Uh, I didn't like. No, I didn't have like. I, I'm, I'm not doing this if I don't become a household name. That wasn't it. But I. <sighs> Okay, so ambition versus dreams versus is difficult, but no, it wasn't. It was never like I'm doing this for a paycheck. I did it because I enjoyed stand up, and then like there was hidden underneath all this, there was a a wish, a drive, and amb an ambition to to become really, really good at it and take it from there, but the trying to get good always superseded like making money or being famous or anything like mm. i i really enjoyed the craft of it that was what i wanted to master hey, you're always really, but you've always been really hard yourself though too like yeah, again me? like yeah no but again again like hosting for example like like you never wanted to host it didn't 
But I mean, none, none of the three of us ever wanted to host, really. Uh, no. But that's also, but that's also a weird thing. I was going to touch on that too. Is that normally comics we we start clubs because we want a stage, like we just want yeah. a guaranteed spot. But we weren't like that. So we 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 do the just having club open was enough. Like there were nights, there were nights that like I, I I didn't host and I didn't go on stage. I was just there. And there were lots of nights when you didn't host and you didn't do a say just like just DJ. Why the hell do we even do that? Why do we even have a club? I think you know, I think that's twofold. Uh, I think we spoil ourselves a bit. Like we we had this place where we could do whatever the fuck we wanted, uh, and yeah, sometimes you're not feeling it, so you don't. Uh, for me, part of it was also respect of the audience and uh, or for for the audience and for the other comics. Like I don't need to take up this slot because I don't really want to, and I have nothing n nothing new hmm. to say. I would go up and I would do the same same bit just because uh so yeah i think that was part of why we didn't but also i think at least for me and i i think it applies to you as well like we felt a responsibility for all these comics these wannabe comics everyone who came week after week to our pretty shitty club at times <laughs> and like we wanted to do it for them as well hmm. so yeah also thorny weird ball of weirdness because <laughs> <laughs> those nights when i didn't want to perform uh anything i kind of hated being there and it never ended i we, we got home at like two in the morning on a thursday <laughs> a wednesday and a thursday uh so Fridays, I was a wreck at work, and we worked the same job. Just, all right, I'll be here physically and hope no one talks to me and I need to do anything because <laughs> I can't. There's nothing left in the tank. That's also something, too, is that I mean, when I first started, it, it took me like about a year to really get going. Yeah. Uh, but by the end of the year, I was doing between five to ten gigs a week. Yeah. I was just always out. And by the end of 2019, like I, I, could, I knew, like okay, I need to at least slow down. Uh, eventually, I would just say I need to take, I have to just take a break completely. Yeah. But even like back in 2018, we had so we had the club two nights a week. I was working at another club. You were there sometimes too. Yeah. Like weekends. Yeah. And then I book like a big band, like a working yeah. club, one Sunday a month. And that's pretty much all I was doing, nothing else. Yeah. And even like like the Sunday night, I often I would cancel because I just even that was like too much. But it was out Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's like I really don't no. want to go, which is really shitty because I'm and I, 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 I was in a position where I, I said, Salem, I, I can book myself this club once per month. Yeah, but there's a lot of comics who can't book themselves no. there that often. Uh, no, but also you have to you have to do things for you not because others don't have the opportunity like you don't you can't measure yourself against that uh i, I didn't want to take it for granted it's, no it's, <laughs> but you've kind of earned the right to take it a little bit for granted you have done the legwork you have perfected your craft to a degree where you can book yourself at least once a month and then you can say fuck it and you've earned that i would say uh, and the people who can't keep grinding mm. if that's what you want to do so but back in yeah was that 2018 jesus christ uh my wife pumped the brakes uh and she was like i see you monday night <laughs> yes <laughs> so you should be home more yeah you start off by saying someone had told you to slow it down yeah yeah uh so i mean that's also uh there was no there wasn't but there would have been a point in time if i kept going where i would have had to make a choice like do i stay in a relationship do i keep fairly well-paying jobs or do i just make the right choice join the dark side <laughs> 
do drugs, drink too much, die in a ditch. Uh, and yeah, I never hit that point. I think, luckily, because I tend to self-destruct, and I would probably have picked the wrong ones <laughs> and gone for it. Can you imagine that pain? When you do that, like you go, all right, fuck it, quitting my job, breaking up with my significant other, and I'm going for comedy, and you can't make it work. I cannot imagine that. No. I think maybe that's also maybe a benefit of, my, I started comedy when I was about 30, so 34, 35. Right. 35, 35. Uh, it was pr pretty late in life to, uh, to start doing comedy. I've never been in a position where I could say, hey, you know what, I'm going to give this a shot and just quit no. my job. I have a family. I, I, have, yeah. I have responsibilities. There's no way to do that. Yeah, but I, I think it was uh, probably, I think it was Magnus Bithnia. It was like, uh, at some point, you're going to have to quit your job to get really good because you need that fear. Uh, otherwise, you won't chase it hard enough and yeah obviously he's a huge success and it worked out so then fantastic advice but if you <laughs> fail jesus christ that's, that's just bad <laughs> and also we live in sweden i mean it's not like there's a, a massive amount of no. growth opportunity uh for comedy there's it's not like other countries there's not much going away for the there TV. is no there's... college circuit here which is like American comics, there that's where they grind their teeth. That's where you go when you quit your office job. You do grind the college circuit and make a living. And then you hopefully get good enough to get a TV deal or big enough to do actually proper stand up full time. Hmm. There that step doesn't really exist here. Yeah. I mean there's some people who do make a living only doing stand up in this country, but but not many. And if you're not on TV, you're for the general public, you're invisible. Yeah. And there's very few comics who actually even get on TV even a little bit. Yeah. There's no there's no wacky neighbor role uh, on Swedish networks. No. Not really. Although comedy is in a weird place now, I would say. Like everyone likes a different thing, and they really hate what another person loves <laughs> so it's, there's no household ah oh, this is actually kind of okay there's nothing like that yeah one size fits all no yeah i not mean not really, no. there's no there's no seinfeld anymore <laughs> uh, so yeah well i guess one of my biggest questions for you is uh this is for all all ex comics or yeah. breaking comics or comics who's not performing right now is that you were you were clearly driven to the stage because you, you wanted to show this creative side of yourself, or you, or you wanted to get the audience reaction. You were you had drive for it, and now you're not doing that. Yeah. Does that mean the need is gone? Or... Absolutely not. Okay. I'm I'm looking for some kind of outlet, and I mean I do full on sets for my wife at home. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and now she's, now she's gone the other direction and she's like, please leave. I, I don't want to see you one night a week. It's enough. Maybe. Maybe we'll get there. Uh, but no, it is absolutely not gone. Um, but I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have a job that I really enjoy now. So that takes some of the edge off, even if it's not creative. It's... It's a fun outlet, uh, so I, I can kind of let that air out. But no, I'm probably looking for something, something creative to do. I just fuck it, I'm fucking trying to learn the harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I still, still need it. Probably not to the same extent, because I'm happier now than I was when I started stand up. Uh, so the need, the need for approval that I guess always has been there in some form, that is, if not gone, so dramatically lessened. Hmm. But yeah, I need a creative outlet. Okay, well, good luck yeah. with that. Well, I'll tell you when I find something. <laughs> I can find my mixtape on SoundCloud. <laughs> but yeah.
Uh, but how about you? How do you how do you feel? Do you get to be creative, or are you? Not really. Well, it's again, it's just, it's, a, it's just been a weird year. Yeah. Like I wonder how. Like I said, I I, I decided to take a break at the start of twenty twenty. Yeah. And right as I was like feeling like okay, I'm I'm ready to give this tangibly a shot again, was when Corona hit. Yeah. So there weren't many opportunities. I did gig a few times, uh, and I had like I, I remember like I, I I didn't perform at all in, in January or February. In March, I hosted uh, two nights, and the first night I just ate complete shit, uh, just so rusty. I, I thought I, I thought I could sleep my way through like I always did, but I was like, no, that's wild. And the next night was much better, so that, that was really good. But then I didn't gig again for months after that. Mm. Um, so I, I did like I, I think I performed maybe five times last year and I guess I, I haven't really missed it very much but at the same time I don't know how it would have felt if I had decided to take a break and there was no corona like like if there were still yeah. like 80 clubs open in Stockholm and I was just seeing on Facebook Instagram just the post but the new show new show new show new show if I would still if I would still feel as like content yeah. to not do anything I don't know I don't, no, I'm, not sure the answer, I'm not, I really don't know very difficult to know as well we can't A/B test this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but oh, now that you uh, talk about being rusty, like I can't imagine how my first five sets would be <laughs> if I started now, and I don't know because, but like I said, like I think I was in a place where I, I bombed very rarely, like proper bombed. Obviously, I had poor sets, but proper bombed very rarely. I don't know if I could take a proper bombing, like coming back, I would be rough. Uh, Cause I really don't miss that, the feeling of bombing. You know, one thing that you would have experienced, um, I'm sure I'll have to experience the same thing, is that, so so one club has stayed open yeah. uh, during this entire time, and well, I've not been there since November, uh, I think, maybe it's earlier than that, but I have, talk to people who have been going there consistently and what I've heard is there actually is like right now a mini boom in rookies like because there's plenty of spots so there are a lot yeah. there are actually a lot of people who right they're right now doing their first gigs which Jesus like this is the way they're gonna get their first experience on stage like with a little very tiny tiny crowd. but okay but now they're starting and they're they're pushing through and they're yeah. gonna be going there consistently. So now now like when you go there, if you're gonna do a set there, or I'm gonna do a set there, I'm gonna walk in with all the experience that we have and meet these absolute rookies, and they're gonna look at us like, yeah, like, what's who, that? like, who, like who are you? Like, <laughs> like, like you're, you're not worth anything yeah. until you actually go up and say to improve yourself. Yeah, but I, I like that. Uh, you're only as good as your last set. No, that is not true, but. Uh, I do think stand up should and is a bit of a merit meritocracy. Uh, Merit yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't try to use big words. <laughs> uh, so I I like that aspect of it. Uh, and personally, I I kind of don't. Ironically, even though I have this, oh, I want to be famous in a household name. I don't want people to know who I am. I like being the underdog. It would, I've had sets where I haven't really known anyone in the club. Uh, it's been like they know each other because I've taken breaks before and then I come back. It's a rookie heavy night at Big Ben and I go up and I do pretty well. Uh, and they have no, no fucking clue who I am. I like that feeling of yeah. just sneak, sneaking <laughs> in. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah it's a good feeling isn't it i i do like it i was i was talking to someone else a yeah. mutual friend who had that experience uh, recently pre-covid he just yeah. hadn't been uh at big, at big ben just, yeah. uh, for example he had not been there for a long time walked in got that reaction of just like no one paying a mind or anything yeah. and he just had like his ego just went, like yeah you do not <laughs> know who i am i'm just <laughs> right but I, that's at the same like i don't i don't have that reaction i'm almost I'm almost embarrassed now because because I'm I'm about to celebrate ten years yeah. as as a comic, and I don't really have a whole lot to show for it. Like I'm I mean I'm, I'm performing at like one of the top 
three clubs in in South Carolina on a regular basis, and yeah. there's a lot of, a lot of comics who will give, give the left arm yeah to be there as often as I am. So so I I appreciate that as I've worked and I've, I've gained that. Uh, I've gone on tour in Sweden with other comics. I've headlined shows, but I'm still. I'm not a comic. I'm not someone who I can't get a gig everywhere I want to. There's, no. there's plenty of clubs who are not interested in me. Even like rookie clubs but never ask me yeah. if I want to perform there. Even those motherfuckers like I gave <laughs> I gave them their spots at my club, but never contact me for uh, the whole business comes out. I mean, I I, I think it's part part of that lack of ambition. Like I I don't have that same. I'm not, there's no goal I'm driving for. No, I, I feel like I feel like I'm exactly where I should be. Yeah. That being said, it is slightly embarrassing if I'm talking to someone like a big band who has done like, oh, they're going to do like their fourth gig ever. And they're like, oh, how long have you been doing this? Oh, well, 10 years. 10 years. I'm, and I'm first and I have five minutes. <laughs> so I so stick with it. And 10 years from now, you can be <laughs> exactly <right> <laughs> the same place. Uh, I remember uh, it's probably one of my top three, top three gigs and experiences uh it was uh yeah it was at big ben um and i can't remember if i was booked or if i got a walk-in spot but anyways everyone got seven minutes except me <laughs> i got four <laughs> uh and that that fucked with me i uh, i was really mad uh, and then I walked up and yeah, that's one of the few times I actually just killed and then walked off and just went home. <laughs> just, I'm done. I went home. Uh, so that is one, that was a really good feeling. I should perform angry more often. Uh, what's your, do you have a top three of like good? Memorable gigs? Uh, I don't know if I have a top three. I, I couldn't say my top one. Yeah. Actually, I can. That'll, that'll be uh, Raw. So, so yeah. Raw is one of the top uh, You were stages. really good that night. I had a really fun time. I, 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 that's that now was a club I always thought, like, I'm never going to go. Mm. I'm never going to get a spot at this club. And I'll never get a spot at that club again. But I got a spot <laughs> that night, and I had a really good set, so I was yeah. really happy with that. So that was really fun. Yeah, I get that. Should be a good memory. Thought you were good. And one, one of the highlights, for, one of the highlights for me, or maybe like the highlight of, of that set was uh, I. So I have a bit about uh, white power. Yeah. So long story short, uh, so I have I have a bit uh, where it involves me getting the audience to scream white power. So I, I do like I, I, I challenge the audience to like to like oh like we hate dumb people right and like all right and then I'm so rusty I don't remember the bit myself. <laughs> but I'm getting I'm getting the crowd to shout and then I ask them to scream white power and. No one says anything. No one responds to that, of course. Uh, and then I kind of like convince them and then get them to scream white power after all, uh, which is really fun when it works. Yeah. It usually it works. Um, yeah, sometimes, it's, it's a good bit. Doesn't always, but sometimes it really works. But the highlight for me uh, was that like was the first time I asked the crowd to scream white power. And you were the only one. <laughs> I just heard you. I heard I, I, Jenny. Yeah. Uh, scream, just scream. <laughs> An audience of like 200 people. That was that was that yeah. was fun. That was a uh, highlight. This is so good. I really love that bit. Uh, really love it. It's so good. Well, speaking of bits, yeah. Uh, so my goal of the podcast is to wrap up each night with each uh, podcast with exchange of war stories because that's one thing I really do miss about hanging out with our comics is telling war stories. And uh, I thought we'd just go back and forth. And I actually forgot. I didn't prepare one myself. I completely, completely <laughs> forgot. But I was thinking, unless you want to go first. No, go. Okay. Uh, I, I touched, touched on it earlier. I know you've heard part of this before, but uh, the first time I bombed. Yeah. So I'll go back, backtrack a little bit. So it was six months in. I, I, I just got to the point. Uh, I mentioned earlier. I got to the point. Like, I, made, I can make them laugh. Now I'm just going to do what I want to do. And I was really making audiences grown and really just hate me because I thought that was fun that was really yeah. fun for me and had of course I had a down syndrome punchline bit of course back in those days everyone needs to go through that yeah uh, but I, I used to go to uh, Dublin Ireland uh, for work and since I was there I did a gig and that night was the audience could vote the funniest person there would be a winner each night 
and I went to the club uh, to perform and uh, two people I worked with came to watch me and I was did really well it was a really it was a really fun set they liked the audience liked me a lot uh, but by the end of the set I just made them despise me they was like they just really hated me at the end uh, came on stage I was kind of like springing my set because I was really happy I had mission accomplished and the people I work with like just asked me like why why did you, why would you do that like you were like you could have won and I and I just I said I just quote like I said I don't care what they think the day like the day after I came back to Sweden and it was a Thursday night and I was I was booked to the club in uh, in Solna which is like a Stockholm suburb and my first time at this club and I had a 15 minute set it was the longest amount of time I'd ever been given on stage I was really excited for it. And I invited everyone I knew to come see me. And I think there were at least 10 people I knew uh, actually came that night to watch me. And I went up and the, I mean, the audience, they didn't know there was gonna be a show that night. So they were totally completely disinterested. The micro, the sound system was, was <laughs> pure painful. It was a wireless mic. They got like, if you moved in any direction, you get like, massive feedback. I had a table like right, literally like right next to me, full of people who d did not care at all. I was actually bothering them that I was up up there trying to tell jokes. Oh no! There was one table of people that actually were listening and actually were enjoying even my sets for some god known reason. Uh, so I've since learned, like in the future, if I'm in that position again, you gotta focus on the people who actually like you. But just then, all I could do was just focus on how much I was just completely eating shit. It was just my first and worst ever gone through. And that was a Thursday. It was the first day of a four-day weekend. So I just left after my set. And actually, no, I, I, I lie. I left and was just feeling awful in the club. And the next comp went up and also bombed. So I felt a little better. And the next comp went up and also bombed. It's like, okay, it was not just me. And then the next comic went up and just turned the whole night around. Yeah. They loved her. Like, she, she read the room. She did crowd work. They absolutely adored her. And I was, I was like, okay, this is definitely me. That's just, <laughs> I was just, I was just awful. And I just went home. I don't think I got out of bed for the rest of the weekend. No. I was just in a dark room and just felt absolutely shit. Have you cried over a bombing? No. That okay. Done. I have. Perhaps. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Uh... All right, my story. Uh, I think I'm. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to go with the show we did for uh, Stockholm's municipality. They hired us to put on a show at a town square during the summer outside. Do you remember this? Oh yeah, the uh, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, wait, you, wait, Kung Kung yeah, yeah. Okay. We did two shows, I think. Yeah. I wasn't there for the first one, but and, I, I was... and I wasn't there for the second one. Yeah, uh, so. and uh, I got the the honor of hosting, which we've already established. I hate. <laughs> I just loathe hosting because I I'm not good at it. But I was okay at it if I got a good start. Uh, if I didn't, I just dug myself a hole and hated everything. So that was my problem with hosting. Uh, I was then it was decided that I should host this outdoor gig, which everyone who does stand up knows that outdoors is just bad. You need darkness and, and in the walls summertime and alcohol. In Sweden, where it's just bright, broad, day, broad daylight. Yeah. Broad daylight. Uh, the sound system we had, if you raised your voice even slightly, uh, the there was an echo against the building that we were facing. Like, the, what could have been maybe 75, 80 yards away or something. So there was a slight delay before the echo came back. <laughs> uh, and our audience consisted of a tourist family so mom dad and four kids where the oldest was maybe eight uh like four drunks like park bench drunks uh vietnam war wet vet <laughs> drunks uh and the one one guy who 
just he had ridden by on his bike stopped went back and stood stood in the absolute back of this awful bench setup we had and we were on a stage like a proper stage so we were probably like two meters off the ground and they were right up by the stage on park benches so if you if you wanted to have any sort of eye contact you had to walk to the edge and lean down <laughs> uh so front row was an adorable little girl who was maybe three years old uh second row were her brothers and sisters third row were the parents who did not speak swedish and then the drunks who were fighting and way in the back we had the dude with the bicycle <laughs> and so i wasn't feeling great when i walked up and i didn't know that we were going to have this echo and if you've ever done public speaking dear viewer you know that hearing yourself on a delay really screws <laughs> with all <laughs> timings uh, and i had to try and pull off this show uh which i did not do it did not go well uh, and we didn't have we didn't have budget so we could pay everyone I think we paid a like the headliner like a nominal fee uh, I believe I vaguely remember that yeah thing. it was it was not a lot of money and we we needed to fill like an hour an hour and a half uh, with comics who were okay with doing this awful gig <laughs> for no pay so they were also struggling because y you don't get the top tier <laughs> if it's free outside in the summer uh and even if i even though i warned them that you're gonna hear yourself if you raise your voice even slightly they all did it and they got thrown off timing uh <laughs> the the family of eight or whatever they were there were so many kids i think they they multiplied before our eyes but by the end there were only kids uh they left pretty early uh the drunk the drunks the vietnam vets uh they stopped fighting and started screaming at us <laughs> and then we had the dude with the bicycle who for some reason stayed the entire show uh tried to come up with better punchlines for every joke <laughs> did he succeed no he, he was not a professional comic either but he wasn't worse than anyone <laughs> on that stage uh so that is probably one of the most painful memories i have just period in stand-up definitely in life yeah and my dad beat me <laughs> <laughs> so yeah probably a worse one you should be happy you went there but the first one was okay wasn't it it was okay but it was a similar situation but yeah. I, I, we didn't have an echo i don't, don't at least I don't, don't not that i can remember an yeah. echo issue but we did have uh the audience uh being primarily homeless people uh or just the elderly or just drunk i actually posted the picture and just said oh look the crowd's going wild I just barely alive Oh, and they, the municipality, they had tied our hands as well. We weren't allowed to talk about everything. So we also had to tell these free comics, like, these are the topics you can't talk about. Like, it wasn't allowed I wonder, to... I wonder, I wonder if they reacted to when we were there, because we didn't get any kind of, like, No, we, 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 had, we had a list the entire time. It was, it was not allowed to be even interpreted as racist. We weren't allowed to talk shit about the municipality hmm. uh, and uh, not allowed to be like misogynistic. So, so there were quite reasonable demands, but if you give those demands to a comic who is willing to do this gig for free outside in the middle of summer, in the middle of the day, it's like telling them you have to do at least <laughs> one joke <laughs> yeah, about right this at you know. yeah oh god oh god <laughs> why did i bring that up it helps you, yeah you, you, like you said you started to miss it you started to miss stamp a little bit so yeah now, no, now you can think of, no, oh no, you know what Maybe no, no more no yeah. more <laughs> 
All right. Is, Should we wrap it up? Is that it? It was a blast I being so, here. Yeah. I don't know if we have any, at least for me, I don't know if I have any more answers on why I don't miss it as much as I think that I should. I mean, we'll we'll do a follow up next week because you bought the beer, so I'll be here again. <laughs> right, good. Uh, <laughs> you talk about, yeah. Uh, and I mean, if people hate me, they can't find me. I've deleted myself off the internet. That's true. Yeah. Well, let me say, here's a chance to plug yourself, and you can. Yeah. I I removed myself from like people can't find my phone number or my address. <laughs> plug myself from those two. <laughs> nice. Uh, all, right, all right. Well, Eric, it was a pleasure. Thank it you very much. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you all for listening, and uh, see you next week. Have a good one. Bye.